Welcome back to The Daily Mastermind. George Wright III here with your daily dose of inspiration, motivation, and education. And I'm telling you what, this is part two of your identity. And I, I, I'm really excited about this topic because I think it's something that can make a major difference in most of our lives. Yesterday on the podcast, we talked about your identity and why it's so important. And um, today we're going to talk about, um, you know, could you be having an identity crisis? You know, what are the signs? How do you get control over and start to manage your mind and five simple steps to manage your your identity, your mind, and, and ultimately create more results in your life. So I hope you'll join me uh, for about 10 minutes here as we kind of go through some topics. I want to start you out, though, with the quote of the day by John Atkinson. John Atkinson. He says, if you don't run your own life, somebody else will. If you don't run your own life, somebody else will. And I got to tell you, this is probably the best quote that we could have for this part two episode on identity because many of us at times will say, look, I haven't had time to work on my personal development, my mindset, I've just gotten so busy. But what we fail to remember is that your identity, your personality, your life experience is being shaped even when you're not consciously creating it. And so it's so important to understand that if you don't run your own life, if you don't build and work on your own identity, it's going to be worked on for you. And that's why I'm excited about this topic. Now, if you didn't listen to the podcast yesterday, you can go back and listen to that. But we're highlighting some thoughts that I've gotten from Dr. Caroline Leaf, who wrote the book, a best-selling book, Cleaning Up Your Mental Mess, Five Simple Scientific Proven Steps to Reduce Anxiety, Stress, and Toxic Thinking. And the reason I love this book, now, yesterday, you're going you're gonna to remember that we talked about that you are not your mind. You're just managing it. You have to learn to manage it. And your identity is being shaped by how you filter and see things. But your identity is also shaping how you filter and see things. And, you know, we, we, we talk about how when you think and you feel and you choose, you're creating a life experience, much like the results that we talk about you're, you're creating when you have your thoughts, feelings, and actions. Um, but the confidence level, the self-worth, the happiness, everything in your life is being defined and filtered through this identity. And it's so important that all of us understand that our identity is unique. It's special. It's different. No, no two people are alike. You have an identity that's very unique to you. So what are you going to do when, and if you don't, maybe you don't notice this, but when you're having an identity crisis, when you're starting to have your identity shape your life in contra on contrast to where you want it to be shaped or where you want it to go. How do we manage our mind? How do we create a strong identity? And that's what I want to talk to you about here today. And we're going to talk a little bit about this. Um, but first, the way we're going to kind of set this up is to identify what it is that helps you to know if your identity is weak, if your identity is struggling, if you're having an identity crisis. And there's a lot of questions and, and things, but understand that your mind and your body and your emotions will, they'll, they'll be signs, they'll trigger, they'll create um, little red flags for you to look at. So I want you to ask yourself a few questions. Number one, you know, are you filled with inspiration, purpose, and passion? Do you feel creative? Do you, do you have excitement? Mm -hmm. Or on the contrast, are you tired? Are you run down? Um, are you not, are you lacking creativity? Because if those, are the, if those are the things that you're feeling in your life, then you could be struggling from a weak identity. You could be struggling with your identity and, and how it's shaping your, your view of the world right now. Are you, do you have the ability to create peace or feel calm? Do, can you not? I know that there's ups and downs in life. Excuse me. But, but can you bounce back and get to a place where you can feel calm? Or are you stressed and anxious? Um, and, and another great way to identify what your identity is doing for you is looking at how you treat yourself. Are you kind to yourself or are you patient with yourself or are you short and critical and argumentative with your own, you know, thoughts and personality? Are you, are you able to catch yourself and, and bounce right back? Cause that's another thing. Look, understand that we're all going to have our ups and downs, but can you catch yourself and make a change with your, with your mind? Can you, um, you know, get back to the place you're looking for and, and on the right path? Another thing is ask yourself, 
and this is if you're struggling with your identity, is do you have a sense of direction? Or are you feeling stuck and alone or paralyzed or in limbo? You know, are you feeling overwhelmed and, and negative and having tech, you know, these toxic thoughts that we talk about? Or do you constantly have a feeling of hope? Because if you have a strong identity, you're going to have hope. You're going to have peace. You're going to have some calm. And some of the biggest triggers and I would say red flags of having identity crisis or issues is these negative emotions like bitterness and jealousy and rage, anger, um, anxiety and stress, this victim mentality. Those are all telltale signs that you need to work on your identity. Um, and these are not, you know, identity doesn't determine these things, not all of them, some of them it does. But ultimately, most of these problems are rooted in your sense of identity. So once you know that you have a problem, you've, you've created awareness for this, then you have to learn how you're going to use the tools that you have to move forward. Because remember, your brain is not your mind. It's just a tool. And your mind is made up of a lot of different parts. You've got your conscious mind where you're aware of things and you're making decisions. Your subconscious mind where you are unaware, but you're taking everything in. Your, your subconscious mind is taking it all in and is definitely shaping your destiny and shaping your, your life. And then Dr. Leaf talks a little bit about this this third area of your mind, this non-conscious mind, the wise mind, the mind that helps to regulate, you know, 24-7, the gateway between these conscious decisions we're making and everything we're taking in through our subconscious. You have to realize that the tools that you're working with, and you have to start to think of your identity as a very important part of your life. Um, it's, it's, not a, it's not a thing. I mean, of course, it is a thing, but it's a process. Your identity is a process. It's growing and developing you're learning and creating every day, every single day of your life. So it's not just a thing, it's a process that you have to think about. So managing your mind and your identity, that's the way you create an ultimately successful and happy life. You start to manage your mind and manage what it is that you are filtering, what it is that you are prioritizing in your life. And you do this by doing periodic identity checks. Um, uh, Dr. Leaf likes to say, you have to face it, to dissipate it. You have to face the problems to dissipate the problems. And so she's come up with this five simple steps. There are five simple steps that you can use to reduce the anxiety, stress, and toxic thinking, but also create a strong sense of identity. And what I want to do is I'm going to read these five real quick because we don't have a lot of time, but I'm going to read these five steps of this neurocycle process that she's put together. And then I'm going to encourage you to you know, get the book and learn more because there's so much detail. There's so much behind it. And sometimes when you understand why certain things are the way they are, it's easier to learn, but it's also willing, it's easier to accept them. So let's go through these five steps. So once you've created awareness that you've got to work on your identity or you're having a slight identity issue, the first step is to gather. She says, read, listen, and watch what you're thinking and how you're feeling. So both thinking and feeling. Remind yourself that something you're dealing with, or this person often uses their actions and words as a cry for help. And this is just a sign that they're trying to make sense of what's happening to them, but don't know exactly how to verbalize it to you. It could be helpful to remember that often people treat you in a projection of their own turmoil. You've heard that before. Don't take it personal. Embrace and accept the fact that you feel hurt or frustrated. You've got to accept and gather that first step, gather that you're hurting, that you're, you're reacting, that you're upset, that you're, you know, recognize that these are emotions, but they will pass and they don't have to define your actions and your thoughts moving forward. So the first step is to gather. The second step is to reflect. This is where you get into that place where you ask, answer, and discuss these feelings and thoughts with yourself. Try to find out the deeper meaning behind why you're feeling a certain way. Why are you hurt? Why are you reacting this way? Why are you taking it so personal? Reflect on that is step number two. Step number three is to write. And this is a great, uh, this is a great suggestion for anyone, even in your daily rituals. Journal and organize your thoughts that you're having. So after you've gathered and reflected, write down your thoughts. What's going on down in your, you know, in your mind? Write it down in your journal, part of your laptop or smartphone, whatever works. But this helps you to organize your thoughts. I don't know if you've ever noticed that, but when you write what, what you're saying and thinking, it really helps you to organize your thought and get logical about it. So the fourth step is to recheck. 
So after you've gathered and after you've reflected and written down what you're thinking and feeling, recheck, reanalyze and examine what you've written down. Go back to it now and talk to someone else to get a wider perspective of the situation or do some, some feedback on it. But it's always good to go back through what you've written. And then step five is active reach. And this means apply what you've learned or what you've, what you've determined in some tangible way. So once you've calmed down, reach out and love and ask them what you want, what, what you can do. Um, be more supportive. Even if it just means listening to the people and expressing, you know, the, helping them to sort of express their emotions. What you're doing here with these five steps, I hope you've, you really understand these, is you're gathering what you're thinking and feeling. You're reflecting on it. And then you're right. And this is a conversation, not just a thought. A conversation, reflecting on what you're feeling. Write it down. And then go back through it and finally find a way to apply what you've learned so that this is the process. This five-step neuropsycho process is the process you go through to literally change the hardwiring in your brain and set up you know, those paths that fire together, wire together. This is going to literally change your brain. And these steps will help you to connect with your, what Dr. Leaf says is your wise mind, the best version of yourself, and ultimately create a happier, healthier life, which is our goal on this podcast. But it's going to take some work and some focus and time. It's going to take some consistency. But I promise you it'll be worth it. I promise you that these steps, and, I, and, and she just has a beautiful way of putting them together, um, will help you to really detail and, and, and tangibly create a process for you to clean up your mental mess. And the, the book is great because it gives a lot of detail behind it and science, examples that you can relate to. So I highly recommend you go check it out. And this is basically the second part of the identity conversation I wanted to have with you. Later in the week, I'm going to talk to you more about ways that you can shift your, your perspective and some things like that. But I want you to really prioritize this idea of identity. It's going to affect your confidence, your self-worth, your esteem, everything that you have going in your life. And so it's important that you make a conscious effort to develop a strong identity, something independent of the things around you so that you can think, feel, and choose better things in your life. That's my message for today. I hope that's helped you. Do me a favor and share, like, and subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss any of them, but share this with somebody. We don't have sponsors on this show. We want to be able to keep it pure as to a quick budget uh, of your time. But do me a favor and share this episode and then send me some feedback on The Daily Mastermind at Facebook or Instagram. Send me a message. I look forward to helping you and have an amazing week.